Hello and welcome to the Pledge. Well, this week saw the Aussie cricket team on a sticky wicket. I thought we could start our own Pledge team to take them on. June, you can be silly mid-on. Rachel, you can be silly point. Majid, you're a short leg. And Nick, you can't play because you've been tampering with your balls. Coming up, <laughs> June thinks Trump is weathering the storm. Majid defends jokes, even when they involve Nazis. Nick thinks we've had a breath of fresh air in the Me Too debate. Rachel argues Easter is losing its meaning. But first, it's me. I want to talk about the latest hysterical attempt by the anti-Democrats to overturn the referendum result. First, they blamed racists for it, then a selfish older generation, then Murdoch, then the Daily Mail, then the Russians. Now they're screaming 17.4 million Brexiteers were duped into voting leave because a few extra 100,000 quid was passed from one campaign group to another. So if that swung it for leave, how come the £9 million the government spent sending leaflets to every household in Britain didn't swing it for Remain? Those fighting to overturn Brexit need to believe it was a cheat, a conspiracy, a brainwashing exercise, because they refused to see what it really was. An enraged scream by people who felt abandoned, ignored and patronised by our political and liberal elite. What these supercilious, self-serving Remainers <laughs> need to realise <laughs> is the public's moved on. Uh. A recent poll showed a 57% majority of us just want to get on with getting out. This week marks a year before we exit the EU and go global. The anti-democrats need to get used to that. Who needs a satirist? Oh, oh, Who needs satirists when Carol parodies herself now so, no, so no, efficiently? You guys, actually, you supercilious <laughs> remain. No, uh, that's Carol, bad, thanks. Um, as speaking as an hysterical anti-democrat. Yes. Um, I, I think you're right. I don't think that the referendum result is going to be unhinged mm -hmm. by any technicality, but you still fail to address some really key issues that's, that do remain, uh, and I, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, yes, 17.4 million people voted to leave, but they didn't know what they were leaving for. Oh. So let's throw it forward, let's they throw it forward, let's not go back and fight the referendum again, let's just remember. Well, but you keep on trying that's no, not no, true. No, we're not that's fighting the not referendum. Uh, what we need to look at is we've got a year t from today yeah. until we leave. Yeah the EU. Yep. Therefore, we have got to make sure that the deal that is in place when Parliament gets to be have its vote on the deal is good enough for the country to benefit and prosper outside the EU. Therefore, I think Keir Starmer, who is the shadow Brexit secretary, is exactly right. Yep. And instead of just ex enacting the result of the referendum, which we, we should remember was advisory, but the government converted that into mandatory. Was in, on the wait, wait, wait. Didn't no, say that. Hold on, Carol. Anyway, let us just finish. Me, let me just finish. No, but can we let go back to just, what, what no, I'm talking about? No, we can't. We just, oh, we're just I want to finish talk. my point. Okay, okay. No, I'm just going to finish okay. my point, which is this. When it comes to the deal, let us assume... I don't think this is going to happen, by the way. I think Parliament is going to vote for the deal because they're going to be whipped into submission. But really? if... If Parliament votes against the deal, then I think that the following should happen. That the vote on whatever the deal is should be turned to MPs, not ministers. And MPs should be given a free vote on the deal and let us take it from there. Well, you said that before. What I wanted to go back to was, the, do, you, so do you think this fit. latest attempt to derail it is a load of old nonsense? Oh, can I just say something? I said we're not going to have it unhinged by technicality. I, on, this, on this latest, I'm, I'm actually interviewing this guy on my radio show Which on guy? Sunday Shammy. on see the Chami, the yeah. whistleblower. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. and one thing I know for a fact, uh, well, well, hold on, that's a bit harsh. He was yeah. actually outed as and being gay against disgusting. the wishes of oh, no, Well, hang on. If he, if he didn't um, want the uh, world but, to know he was but, gay, why did he take part in the gay pride march if he didn't want the world well, to know well, he was because gay? Because when you're sitting in Pakistan, you're not going to be watching the gay but, pride you? march in London. No, no, I can guarantee you you're not. I can guarantee you're not. You know, I think outing people is unethical, right? And I don't think we should be justifying it. I think people have I'm not justifying it. It had to be done for his boyfriend to qualify why he did it. 
I'm shocked. I, I'm, speechless. Carol, I'm speechless. Why, Carol, speechless? There's, there's very what? rarely can you can you he say something. Say actually, he had to say he was going out with No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He could have refused. Anyway, let's not go. Do you actually say? No, but, but seriously, no, no, Carol, Carol, I'm not going to get into that. It's a losing argument. I think. Magic, carry on. Brexit. I don't think we're going to actually win if we try and say it's actually ethical to out people without their permission. I didn't say it was ethical to out. You said it had to be done. Stop. I said for this guy to qualify, why it was done. I think there's no his ex-boyfriend. This conversation. No. No, please. We do have a grab. Right. Okay. So. Can we actually, in order to calm things down, can yeah. we go to? And there is absolutely no Can we go to Joe way. Coburn's daily no politics was. and hear from the man in For question? His Have you got the sort of the smoking gun that says you must spend the money in this way, and we are telling you to spend it no. uh, with this group? You have no, no. job. You don't. No, we don't. There's, there's the evidence is to do with coordination and how every decision was run through senior members, how AIQ was based in the Vote Leave office, how the, I had never heard of AIQ when the decision was made. That kind of proves my point. Absolutely no evidence. What were you saying, Well, I, I was going to make a point about Brexit, actually, um, and, and that is that your introduction that this is an attempt to derail Brexit strikes me as rather curious, because the man we just saw on the screen there is still pro believes leave. in Brexit, mm. still wants Brexit yeah. to happen. He now, says... if we take what he says at face value, and I don't see any reason not to, because I like to think Because there's no evidence. Beings, that's why. Well, that's hold why. on. Let me make my point. No I'm written evidence. Point for the last well, you said there's minutes. no reason not to. Can I actually make to? my point, guys? Can I actually say what I'm trying to say? Right, so he says he did it because he believes in democracy and the rule of law. I believe him. Mm -hmm. Do I don't think that this derails the Brexit result. He himself believes in Brexit. The Electoral Commission has no powers to derail the sovereign vote, vote yeah. of this nation. All this is, is an inquiry, as there are many inquiries, into what happened during the uh, referendum, including on the Remain side. I agree the 90 million that was spent by Cameron using taxpayers' money um, should have been looked into, wasn't ethical as well. Uh, and so, actually, if it is about the rule of law but, and democracy, but, then that investigation can, applies on both can, sides. No, can I bring Nick in? No one's trying to <laughs> derail Brexit. Just saying, for legal purposes, let's just see what a solicitor for Vote Leave has to say to the point you just made, mm. uh, Majid. Vote Leave has twice been cleared on this matter by the Electoral Commission, as has been the case throughout vote leave is obligated to review to the extent it can after this long elapsed period since the referendum all such allegations and is doing so we will as appropriate share any relevant findings with the electoral commission again as we have always done um, briefly uh, Carol you've got me until you, you're almost saying whatever the deal we must just go forward of course of course we have to respect and of course we must leave and I think every sane politician agrees that I'm a little concerned Majid I respect your position but or I'm so sorry I think it might have been you Rachel one of you saying uh, that the MPs should have a Free, it was your idea, Why you not? If you're what are you frightened of? Yeah. I'm not frightened of anything because I sense that there is a mood within many quarters of Westminster that they do not reflect what the British people have yes. voted for. Exactly. And it would be a but terrible abrogation. Let, let me just let me That's no, that's so, so condescending rude. and that's demeaning. So demeaning. And you right, guys in the keep sense saying that three quarters this. of MPs were on the side of so, Remain. So, so of course he's right, he's stating a fact. I don't think that's a fair reflection, but we must make sure it's the right deal. So you shouldn't yeah, be the sort of World War One gang ho or even gung ho. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the measured deal. But the idea of a free, I think, I genuinely think, would be very, very unfair but to the British people. What Mrs May put forward last week, Nick, and you'd have to admit that it, this yeah. was this was a deal that would probably what suit everyone. What would be unfair to the British that, people that we're is taking the economy over a cliff? You tell me not to talk about people. There you go. Well, the, the, what happened? The deal that, that was that she put forward last week that we will remain uh. in exactly the same position for the next 21 months isn't the deal that every hard Brexiteer wants. But we're prepared to do that mm. to make sure that we don't fall off a cliff and to make sure that everything is prepared. Mm. And I think. Can I say something? Yeah, of course you can. Yes. Thank you. So, as a supercilious Remainer, um, <laughs> uh, uh, and hysterical, <laughs> I find this really interesting because I think if this was the other way round, there's no way that you would be saying what you're saying. If well, this was Remain that had overspent, and if this was Remain that had had so a whistleblower... No, it's not! Yes. Yes. No, 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 they you did. A, let June finish. Let me finish, but what I'm saying is if we had broken yeah. the rules, which is what... It, this is what the whistleblowers are alleging. There's no evidence that the rules the, have been broken. But the whistleblower is alleging that. If that was the case, you would be saying the elitist remainers <sighs> using their money and influence. But do you know, do you, you would you not be on, saying this. You keep on repeating it's things in this argument. Right when it's yours, but time. do you know Because I think the remain, the, re, the remain finances should also be looked at this as well. I'd like to say it. Well, how the, the, parliamentary, the parliamentary secretary yes. of the cabinet office, Chloe Smith, Conservative MP, has said some, has made some remarks. I think it's worthwhile having a look at what she had to say in Parliament. Oh. The Electoral Commission concluded that it was a well-run poll and that it was delivered without any major issues. 
Now, we also know that it was one of the largest democratic exercises in our history. I recognise, in indeed we've seen it here today, that that referendum and its subject matter elicits high emotion. So, elicits high emotion, as we've just seen in this debate. <laughs> but I can assure you, Carol, let me, as a Remainer, say to you, I don't think uh, that this is about derailing the Brexit no. vote. I'm not trying to well, derail the Brexit about? vote. I, I will assure you that from my perspective, and the reason I'm keen to interview this whistleblower, is because actually it's just about the rule of law. I believe mm. him when he says he believes in Brexit and he's more interested in democracy and the rule of law. One he of the doesn't believe in what? democracy if he's saying that there's been, there's been messing about. You can't just keep on saying he believes in democracy when he's trying to derail it. He's not, he is. No, he's not, he's not, why did he do this? Imagine if he wasn't trying to derail it. Because, Carrie, you can believe... You can believe in the rule of law. There's no evidence for the cheating going on. We've got to stop this. There was saying absolutely he basically evidence. he's saying there was ball tampering. Okay? Yeah. It's like he was and asked for the game so, Carol, wasn't played I'm, I'm by the rules. He I'm was asked if there was thing. any I'm evidence astounded. of but for you, what he was you, saying, not a job. Carol, can you can you not see that uh, with Rachel's example there, you can love cricket and be upset if there's ball tampering and still love cricket. He loves Brexit. He wants Brexit to Doesn't happen, but he wants it to happen fairly according to according to his own words. He's already said it in other interviews. He's also said <laughs> there was cheating, and, and there's no evidence of this. So just because he says it, June, doesn't mean it's Look, true. Not everything is an attempt to derail anyway, the Brexit vote. Carol, you must stop, you must stop talking to me like I'm a moron, like I'm a leader. Carol, because that's Carol, what you're doing. No, Carol, no, we will I'm have to agree to you, 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 I'm Carol, perfectly calm. Carol, you're just patronising, <laughs> like not. lots of Remainers Carol, are. Carol, we'll just have to agree to disagree on this one forever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, forget Carol and Madrid, and forget the beast from the east. There's a storm brewing across the Atlantic called Daniels and she makes Katrina look like an April shower. I'm talking about the revelations by adult film actress Stormy Daniels of her alleged affair with Donald Trump. As sleazy as it is, our fascination with political sex scandals is in danger of distracting us from the real problems a Trump's presidency faces. It's not often that you'll find me defending Donald Trump but he's never misrepresented himself. Perhaps politicians had previously been held to an unattainable standard, and Trump's undignified behaviour has brought our expectations of those in public office down to earth with a thud. Now, I look forward to the day when Donald J. Trump is out of the White House and back on the golf course for good. But if anything brings Trump down, it should be his performance in office rather than in any other room. Compared to all the potential inadequacies of Trump's presidency, I think this scandal is more, and I borrow from my dear friend Nick <laughs> Ferrari, a storm in a D cup. Uh. <laughs> I'm just when you go adult, would she play a rabbit or something like that? I just, I'm sure there is. Uh, for She's got years, a great yeah. body of work. Uh, she I, she yeah. has a great <laughs> body of work. Mm. Can I start by saying something? As much as you said you never thought that you would necessarily be a defender, I, I was a mild fan at one point, but actually all hail President Ob Obama and mm. him because he sailed through two terms yeah. and there was never a whiff, whiff of scandal, scandal yeah. and I think that is to be applauded. Yeah. Um, does it mean, yes, I think you're probably right, I think that politicians are by and large held to too high a standard. They only reflect society. Yes. So there are some yeah. radio presenters yes. who <laughs> live some rather dodgy backgrounds. <laughs> there are some radio presenters who live <laughs> tremendous backgrounds. <laughs> there are some journalists who have rather dodgy backgrounds <laughs> and there are some journalists who we can admire. Yes. And I think it is the same with politicians. Yes. And, and what yes. worries me is... There could be somebody out there mm. who could hold the solution to the problems in the Middle East, That's who could hold the solution. Yeah, yeah. And they look at it and they think, actually, I don't have the greatest background. Yeah. I am a bit yeah. of a, a bit of a boy or a bit of a girl. Yeah, actually, and yeah. I'm not going why do I want to put my head yeah. above the back? Yeah, I mean, and yeah. that's what concerns yeah, me. No, look, actually, I'd like to bring in what look what happened to my old friend Toby Young, who yeah. they dug up some yeah. historic tweets, and he was actually running the New Schools Network, which yeah. is a, a government funded charity. Mm. <sighs> Yeah. Mm. You know, so and I think yeah. that you're right, and people aren't going to want to enter public life. Yeah. Do you blame them? You and, blame and you can't blame them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what, so, June? I think Storm Town is. I'm rather lighter. Did I, you like this yes, I, I <laughs> loved the fact she was straight on there. She said, I'm not a victim. Don't class me in yeah. with me, too. I'm not a victim. It yeah, was I wanted, consensial. She said, it was yeah. consensual. I ended up in a room with a creepy old man who offered me, who hinted that he might give a, a turn on the apprentice. apprentice so yeah. she said, I slept with him. And she actually said, I have not made nearly enough money out of this yet. And I think, <laughs> good on you, girl. And the thing is, she is the kind of person who. <laughs> who 
opening the treasury. No, <laughs> the Chancellor of the Exchequer. But the people who voted for Trump were like, she's straight on down the line. She even, and I love that. I love that line in the story where she, when she met him, she, she offered to spank his backside with, with a copy of Forbes copy. magazine. Yeah. 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 Now let's have a look she's, to see. She's if, a worthy let's answer. Let's have a look to see if any of this has actually harmed Trump in yeah. any way yeah. whatsoever. Because yeah. no the truth is that if you look at this, there's been absolutely zero change. Yeah. On his yeah. approval ratings, if you look at that, 2017, 2018, 39 percent yeah. approved yeah. then, 39 uh, percent approved now. The only yeah. difference has been is less people disapprove. Yeah. <laughs> I think the so, Democrats yeah, are going to yeah. need the love child of Florence well, Nightingale. Yeah. 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 Not work. They really are. I'm really glad you raised this, Jim, yeah. because actually it's a brave topic for you to mm. raise. People will accuse you of defending Trump, and the truth is, mm. that actually, uh, um, as you and I know, it used to be. Conservatives yeah, yes. that used to um, pry into liberals' private lives and, and moralise about mm. it. When since when were liberals about moralising yes. about personal sexual conduct? Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. parties and politics has got in the way, and they've upended their values. I personally think that a politicians' private life, as long as they're not breaking the law, mm. um, is, is, yeah. it should stay in private. And also, right? I think the yeah. Democrats have to be very careful because yeah. in spending so much time on this, actually, it takes away from the real stuff. And yeah. your wait, average. Wait, 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 the we problem is. Remember what Stormy did. Stormy Daniels, it wasn't just a one night, you know, one night stand and in exchange for telling the apprentice. She afterwards she alleges that mm. he, she was approached in the car park, threatened. Her daughter was mm. say she was threatened. You know, she was apparently That's allegedly problem, paid too. off by his lawyer, mm. which could be a campaign funding issue. And also but I think yes. you're right in the sense that Trump has never hidden the fact that he's mm. basically Trump, a yeah. sexual am I allowed to say a sexual predator because he said, you know, as I, we remember I just start them. kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. When when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the. Mm. Yeah. You can do anything. We know who we're dealing and with. And I suppose it's all been baked into the Trump profile. And, yes. You know, this is what Trump had to say about his own alleged peccadilloes. That was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I am a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country, and certainly I'm not proud of it. But that was something that uh, happened. And if the Stormy Daniels was just a storm in a D-cup, why did the US <laughs> expel right. 60 diplomats as an amazing dead cat diversionary tactic mm, when the night that she, she went, went on, on CNN? Just yeah. before any attorney, as they call them over there, gets <laughs> yeah. too excited, we're not, of course, suggesting that the president is a sexual predator. Let's hear from White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary Raj Shah on this. With respect to uh, that interview, I will say the president strongly clearly and uh, has consistently denied these underlying uh, claims and the only person who's been inconsistent is the one making the claims. And a story isn't a story without a tweet from the president so let's see what <laughs> Donald Trump has said. So much fake news never been more voluminous or more inaccurate but through it all our country is doing <laughs> great. <laughs> Which coming back to your central point actually by many indicators mm. if we now go to all right, the stock market fintech is off a little mm. bit but if we go to job creation if we go by and large mm. It's well, not doing I'm not, bad. I'm not giving him job creation. Yeah, so, but, but, but employment, 17 year low. Yes. The, yeah, but, more people but the seeds are not of seeds yeah. were sown yeah, elsewhere. But more people agree with what he's doing with the economy but, than don't. But, but that's not that's not my point with, with Trump. But my point here is we're putting so much focus on all of this nonsense when actually what we should be looking at is what's going on in terms of the spending of the family what's going on with Russia. There are more important things where he's concerned that we should be looking at, yeah, but not at, um, at who he dated in 2006. He's important. What he worries about is what people at home think of him, you know? He's, he, he cares about America, and the people in America like what he's doing. I mean, you yeah. said his approval rating hasn't changed. It has, actually. Since February, it's gone up seven points. It went down, and now it's gone up again. So the, the people who voted for him still want him there. There's one they thing, still I, think am, he's doing there's a one thing I am concerned about, mm. and that is that will the office of presidency ever be seen in the same light? No way. Not for you know, a long the, time. The, the way in which, no, know. you know, you mentioned Obama, President Obama, and I had many criticisms of Obama's foreign policy, especially in Syria. But you're right, his presidency is sold by it. It looks like a golden era now compared to what we're yeah. seeing. Conducting himself with such yeah. about, yeah. You know, dignity and About grace. the dignity of yeah. the office yeah. of the president, yeah. you know? And I just wonder, because we had that in Britain, our politics, we, we, had, we actually had a lack of deference to our politicians. We've mm. had that for a long time. Mm. And we, we were met with scandal after scandal. And people don't really admire or look up to their politicians in and the political leaders. Whereas America had something different. The office of the White House was a prestigious uh, and, and honourable position to hold. 
and I wonder if it's become more British in that sense. If no, I if, think if, I if think it will be again. I think it'll go exactly back to where it was. He's a one-off. I don't look know. Look at all the presidents they've had. They haven't had a single one like Trump. He is literally a one-off, mm. which and is why we don't know. Yeah. We don't know no, until I'm the next sure person back. comes in. We yeah. don't know. Like for example, you showed You're that clip with 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 with. I thought, who's that? I thought, and then and you mentioned that. I thought, no, I've no because he's had sacked so many people. Yes, and that the revolving door in his staff is so so high. I don't even know who that was anymore. I followed him. I thought you were going to say the play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got a clip. Like uh, no, like play. I've got a clip of Roseanne Barr. Uh, let's have a look what she had to say. He's the president, and uh, that's it. He's the president, and we're in a war. So, you know, I think we should all pull together and uh, try to get over our great divide. Did you watch the Stormy Daniels interview last night? No, I don't care about that. So obviously Roseanne Barr uh, is the comedian, and what's interesting about well, she's channeling Carol Malone yeah, because she yeah. says we should all get together just, and get over the grid. Why does she have to chew gum when she's making a point? <laughs> <laughs> it's Roseanne. She's 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 Roseanne. She's Roseanne. She's but what's Roseanne. interesting with Roseanne she's is her TV show just returned, uh, uh, came back on air uh, earlier this week, and it's the highest rated show in six years, highest rated scripted show in six years, and the family are a pro-Trump family. So that's quite interesting. Mm. Maybe what you're saying talking is of, true, Carol. Talking of Roseanne, the comedian, we're going to move to another comedian who's yeah. got himself into trouble. <laughs> uh, YouTube prankster Mark yeah. Meachin has been convicted of a hate crime yeah. after posting a video of his dog doing a Nazi salute to phrases including the horrific gas the Jews. Apparently and understandably, this rather puerile joke caused gross offence. But however unfunny the joke was is irrelevant, surely, to the principle of free speech. Defending speech you agree with isn't defending free speech at all. It's only defending yourself. Defending free speech only applies when you disagree. Now, viewers have every right to be offended by my speech, but no one has a right to insist that I don't offend them. Else, we may as well just say nothing at all. Criminalising a hitherto unknown comedian for his unfunny joke is something we'd expect from the Nazis themselves. Remember Basil Fawlty or Allo Allo? This judge should be ashamed of his chilling precedent. How do we lampoon ISIS, for example, if by imitating them we're to be accused of glorifying terrorism? The correct response to a joke that you don't like is simply not to laugh at it. And just as a warning that some viewers might find the language used in this debate uncomfortable. You see, you've got me puzzled here, Magic, yeah. because a couple of weeks ago on this show, I was actually defending free speech, and you were telling me that you made it perfectly clear to me, to me in no uncertain terms that free speech can turn into hate speech. And one of the quotes you said was, you mm. said, language used in newspaper that stokes up anti-Muslim sentiment That's right. will create an atmosphere yeah. that breeds anti-Muslim violence. Yeah. Now, if we must not aid the hatred of Muslims, why is it OK to aid the hatred of Jews? I don't know whether you saw doesn't this it, guy. It yeah. this, oh, I, well, I think it does. I don't on. know whether you saw... Did you watch this guy's video? Did yeah, you look at on. it? No, no, no hang on. Well, I'm well, answering no, your before, question. Yeah, yeah, I know did you look? Are. OK. And, so, and yes, 30 you, times... Yeah, at least... No, well, let me finish. You, yeah, you've, you yeah. want to finish? Let me finish. Yeah, at least 30 times he yeah. said, gas the Jews, gas the yeah, Jews. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. laughing. You don't think that will incite hatred or yeah, violence that is not against what Muslims? That's saying because at all. I'm, it's you, exactly what he said. I have the quote no, here, Jane. I'm sorry, it's exactly what yeah. he said. Fine. You said inflammatory language, yeah. even if it's legal, creates an atmosphere where violence mm. can happen. So mm. you don't say, think shouting gas the Jews mm. 30 times mm. is inflammatory oh. language? OK, so um, I, I honestly don't know where to go with this. Uh, yeah, well, do you think gas the Jews is inflammatory language? Well, There's Carol, somewhere to Carol, go. I, I've just won an award for challenging anti-Semitism. I write for a Jewish newspaper. I'm, a, I'm actually going to Geneva to receive another Fine. award for challenging anti-Semitism uh, by the Jewish community. Um, I, I don't want to make it about anti-Semitism and my views, because they're quite well known. I do want to make it about the difference between hate speech and comedy, if mm -hmm. I may. Uh, because the two examples you're giving... Um, whether it's challenging anti-Muslim bigotry or it's indeed challenging Islamist extremism, which I'm better known for doing, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, challenging extremism that comes from my own communities. Hate speech is when you're inciting violence, specifically. I don't see it the same as comedy, and that's the debate I think we should be Who having. Who says it's comedy? Hold on, hold on, let, let, me, let, me, let me explain. Uh, because in comedy, when cracking jokes, it's the intention of the comedian that matters, 
And it's the, it's the intention, as stated at the beginning of this very video that we're discussing, uh, where the comedian himself says, I'm doing this joke because I wish to upset my girlfriend uh, because her dog is So that's is OK, a then. Well, so shout, gas the Jews Carol, as much as you want. Let me explain what he said, and then we can discuss it. He says, because this pug is the cutest dog that, 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 that we have. It's the cutest thing we can think of. And turning it into a Nazi, the uncutest thing that he says on the video, um, is something I'm doing to, to, as a joke to offend the Nazis and to wind up my girlfriend. Now, the, during the Nazis, a Hungarian did the same thing. Um, the Nazis accused this Hungarian man of training his dog to do a Nazi salute. Well, you know what they did? They then prosecuted this Hungarian man. They did exactly the same thing because they were offended that they were being compared to dogs. And so, actually, with comedy, it comes down to intention and interpretation. And what I'm and suggesting... Context. And, and context. context. Let, me yeah. ask, let me ask you this. I hear what you're saying, and I'm, I'm a long way g g going down the road. If you were running, oh, I don't know, a French satirical magazine, yeah. would you knowingly put on the cover yeah. a cartoon of Mohammed, mm. knowing yeah. how it upsets So, so again, during that time, um, and, and actually two years before the Charlie yeah, Hebdo attacks, I posted a, a picture of the Prophet Muhammad yes, on Twitter yeah. and said, I'm not offended, and that Muslims should grow up and grow a spine. And then the Charlie Hebdo attacks happened, and I was very vocal about defending the magazine and still remain vocal so, so about it. So it is all right to deliberately... I'm just asking, yeah. I'm not saying you're yeah. wrong, but it is all right to deliberately cause offence. Yes. It, because, yeah. because, you've got every right to take offence, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you've got no right to insist that I don't offend you. And the difference between inciting hatred is when you, what, what's called targeted hate, when, you, when your speech is targeting specifically and inciting so violence against the So, lastly, then, I will yield the floor. Someone yeah. once did some pretty foul gags about um, Katie Price, mm. a.k.a. Jordan's son, mm. who has various learning disabilities, yeah, yeah. but we won't yeah, get into yeah. He's not hidden. Yeah. I mean, really vile right, gags. Right. You know the solution Are they that? permitted? No, you see, permitted, what we're talking about is a criminal offence. I don't like those jokes. I don't like this joke. We're talking about sending some, a criminal conviction, sending somebody to jail. That's why I think we're mixing topics no, no, here. here. But you can, can you do vile gags about a disabled well, well, you boy? Can, legally, you can do them. I will object to them. As I, I don't find this joke funny. Right? Are you now dancing on the head of a pin, Rajiv? No, no, because no, because yes. we're talking what about you're saying is what somebody. the ramifications We're talking about be, saying you're That's a criminal now saying. for this joke, which is very different saying I don't like the joke. That's not right. dancing on the head of a pin. Right. That's the same as a debate, actually, that Carol raised the other time uh, when, when I said, look, the difference between inciting anti-Muslim bigotry. You should be legally entitled to say what you want as long as you're not inciting violence, but be careful in, in outside the context can of comedy I, you, that you're not inciting you, you hate. Well, well, can I, jokes are jokes. Can I say... Can I, because it's not a joke. Never anything is inflammatory. Majid, this. here's what the actual judge yeah. had to say on the issue and why he ruled the way he did. In my view, it is a reasonable conclusion that the video is grossly offensive. The description of the video as humorous is no magic wand. This court has taken the freedom of expression into consideration, but the right to freedom of expression also comes with responsibility. And I have to say, Majid, mm. when you first raised the topic, mm. I agreed with you, mm. Mm. but I hadn't seen the video. Yeah. And then mm. when I saw the video, I yeah, thought, yeah. at some point, we have to draw the line. Well, no, and you know what? I, He's not going to do that again, is he? You can't send prison for yeah, offending us. Yeah, That's the point. Can we hear what the comedian had to say? And then, Rachel, you can come in. Here's what the comedian himself had to say. I'm not an anti-Semite, and I made this video to f off my girlfriend. That is the literal reality of the situation, but if the court wants to completely reject that reality and substitute it with its own, well, <laughs> unfortunately, that's not up to me. Yeah, now, if I were to be lampooning ISIS, I would be imitating some of their language and some of their slogans. But it's clear, if, especially if I, at the beginning of the video, say I'm now lampooning them, that I'm actually, it's a comedy sketch, whether you find it funny so, okay. uh, yeah, or not. Can you use hateful anything, language then. anyway? Well, of okay. course you can. I tried to write about this last week, and yeah. in, in the end, the, uh, my newspaper decided not to run my piece because mm. I was saying much what Majid said. Which not is as it, well, I would say. Obviously not as well. This, <laughs> this is a video that is still on YouTube, that has been viewed three million times. Mm. I don't think there have been m any complaints from mm. it. It's... No users complained. No yeah. users yeah. have complained. It's a joke not against the Jews, but against the Nazis. Context is all when mm. it comes to telling a joke. And we are now allowing our courts to decide what's funny or not, which essentially means the death of comedy. 
If this man goes to prison for essentially telling a joke, it's not just the death of comedy, it really means we need a First Amendment in this country. Mm -hmm. We need to have a law defending free speech. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, nobody will say anything because they can breach some... But they can be accused of hate speech <coughs> by a judge who doesn't get the joke. But it's the, really serious. A couple of Nazis things. are dogs. A couple, of, th are dogs couple of things. Here. You know, we, we, we need to be aware there will be people from the British Jewish community who are watching now who yeah. feel very, very and concerned. The yeah. 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 So we must yeah. Yes, offer them of respect yes. and you're right but and with with the right to free speech comes the responsibility and this old line you can shout fire in a crowded cinema but it's a pretty irresponsible thing to do so we of have course. the rights but we have okay. to be responsible how they're discharged and i would argue that i'm with june I think that bloke went too far, mm. much as but the one involving go to Kate. Prison. No, no, no. no. So, so I think, I think I'm sorry, he is being sentenced. Next If you were in, a, I mean, if you were in, a, fi if you were in a film, if you were in a film and, you, and, you, and a comedy film, and you shouted fire in a cinema, and then the comedy film showed the reaction. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about in real life shouting fire in a cinema where people will get trampled. You see, there was and a so very they... good example. I remember they, a movie came out some years ago mm. which said it was going to lampoon, I think, ISIS fighters or Muslim yeah. terrorists. It was called Three Lions. Yeah. And everybody went raving mad. Mm. In fact, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, a, a, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's an absolute comedy yeah. about, thank the Lord, how yeah. often yeah. they are yeah. enabled. Yeah. That is where comedy at its best. That's good comedy, Nick. Yeah, but absolutely. Where it takes that situation. comedy shouldn't be criminalised. I just want to say one last thing on this, yeah. actually. It was, I said it was a Hungarian that did it to the Nazis. Mm. It was actually Finnish man. Oh, okay. Did it to Nazis, okay. Just to clarify that. Okay. Uh, but look, that's, that's when comedy works. Nobody, and bad comedy shouldn't be criminalised. Yes, that's the Whether you find it funny isn't the point. It's about his right to say it. Nobody thinks he should be sent to prison. Or of get a criminal not. record for a bad no, joke, No, not guys. even Come criminal on. record. But you guys are saying about. that got this is record. comedy. Okay. You have yeah. to find yeah. this as comedy. Lots of Jewish people in the current climate will not think this okay. is comedy. Yeah. Yeah. We are talking of comedy. Things. Now let's go comedy decades back. It was the 70s after all. But is Pandora a traitor to the Me Too movement or a breath of fresh air? That's next, after the break. For a brief moment, it looked as though another star was going to clamber aboard the hashtag MeToo bandwagon. Actress Pam Dorber starred opposite Robin Williams in the hit comedy show from the 70s, Mork and Mindy, and was interviewed for an upcoming biography on the comic who died in 2014. Her memories of working with Williams? Quotes, I was flashed, humped, bumped, <laughs> grabbed, recalled 66-year-old Pam. And she added he would sometimes wrestle her to the ground and lie on top of her or appear stark naked when they're about to start filming, much like Rachel. <laughs> None of which am I seeking to defend, and all of which is way beyond the normal biff and bat of workplace hijinks. However, just as I feared Scotland Yard might try to get involved, knowing their love of pursuing cases involving celebrities <laughs> long since departed, I noticed Dorber's closing comment, and I quote, It was so much fun. It was the 70s after all. <laughs> Judging events of decades ago by today's puritanically paralysed moors is absurd. Let's move on. There's Nanu Nan nothing to see here. <laughs> that was almost as good as my no, storm win. in a D you cup. Win. You win. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as you know, I'm a strong supporter of, of both Me Too and Time's Up. Um, but I do think, and actually, Rachel, you and I have discussed this, what needs to happen is uh, a much more nuanced debate. And, and at the moment, we're conflating slightly inappropriate behaviour with real sexual harassment and real sexual assault, in the same way that we know that there's a difference between a shoplifter and an armed robber, and the conversation we have about the two are completely different. So I think the good thing about um, what Pam has done is perhaps it will actually open up that um, nuance within this conversation and allow more women to to express themselves and not feel victimised all the time, because she's saying she wasn't a victim. She's yeah, saying yeah. that actually... That was the culture at the time, and she found it quite funny. We opened the show with you quite rightly being labelled as being hysterical, Rachel. <laughs> um, <laughs> has there been hysteria here, though? Again, not condoning recent acts, but we go back, as yeah. June rightly says. Has there been a degree of hysteria in hashtag Me Too? It's um, not hysteria. My, my point on Me Too is that if it's 
not, we're not going to be like leave and remain constantly at war. We've got to take hashtag men too along with yes. the Me Too <laughs> movement. Yes. It yeah. cannot be oppositional. It's got to be united. Yes. Um, but going to your Nanu Nanu Mulka Mindy case, which I think is is hysterical and also refreshing. We've got in what, in what way refreshing? Well, in the sense that. Uh, it's a woman woman refusing to be able to wishes that Robbie Williams gave her that much accept, attention <laughs> accepting that you know male female relations is a bit can be a bit of a rough and tumble but Sometimes. however <laughs> it was the 70s is the Jimmy Savile defense mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm you know I'm, I'm very, Carol and I are of the age where you know we're pretty robust when it comes to these Could things and we absolutely refuse you know to accept that we are victims mm. and you know you have to allow things to happen to you um, however, if Robin Williams had stripped off, he was a jolly hairy man. Oh. I think I would have. I don't think I would have gone through this next scene. Okay. Was Imagine. Was Imagine. Also the, it was also the Cosby defence, in defence of yeah. your point, and yeah. so we do need to be slightly careful. No criminality here with Indeed. Morgan Mindy. and that was my next point. That was going to be my next point. That, but that, that actually backing my up June. Point. Yeah. I took the words out of my yeah. mouth. So, yeah. so in that, yes, the defence can sometimes fall apart. In the Cosby case and in, and in the Jimmy Savile case, it clearly does fall apart because it, you can't just say that was the 70s when you're raping children or drugging oh, women, no, right? Yeah. No, um, no, but no, actually, no. to June's point, there is a, we do yeah. have to um, differentiate between various types of assaults. I think you're right, June. We have to be able to... But somebody tried that, didn't they? Matt Damon. Well, tried to differentiate mm. and pass right. out the exactly. reasons and got yeah. shouted let's, down. Let's go to cases where we have yeah. got as, you know, as much detail as we can work yeah. with. Uh, Carol, strangely quiet, but I sense no. of all the people I'm around the panel... i just waiting my turn. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You're probably the closest to my thinking on this, I yeah, would guess. I, I wanted to cheer this woman yeah. because I think, I think she... she <laughs> she pricked the moral pomposity of some of the Me Too, Time's Up Brigade. You know, I really resent this idea that women are reduced to a quivering mass of fear and nerves if a guy brushes your knee, or if he makes a lunge at you, or if he grabs your ass. The idea that we can't, most women some can't. Oh no! I do. seriously, well, you know, did, yeah. you know. The, but the thing, but we're not, we're not quivering. We're not weak. We're not, we're not these powerless in, in the face You're of not unwanted. Powerful, but but most not... women aren't. Okay, they shouldn't well, right, be. The most. idea that you go running to HR because a guy put, was, grazes his hand across you, know, that is not abuse. And that's what June was talking is this about. A generational thing? This is no, no. no, no this is Carol, a woman. Can we make the point about power? Of if course. a man has yeah. power over the woman and is, you know, in a position yeah. of authority, yes. over, yeah. then we. Have but we don't have to keep qualifying that. Right. We know that that's what we're talking about. But the, 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 what this lady highlights, Pam Dorba, is the difference between... She saw the difference between fun and mischief and yes. flirting yeah. Yeah. and yeah. real predatory behaviour. Yeah. And, and there and is she, a difference. And, she, and there's a there massive a difference. difference. And I'm sorry, in, in, in the, the Me Too, uh, Time's Up situation, many people will refuse to see the difference, refuse to admit it's there. And that's mm, yeah, and yeah. Can I, yeah I, I, in, you know I agree with a, a lot of what you said. Wow. Yes. Some of it, there not so much. Not the we got know, running to HR bit because yeah. I think that's what HR Some girls is there won't for. Be able to take it. Yeah, and Absolutely. I think that's what HR is there for. We need. We need due process. But isn't the way it's but, done, the way this, this flirting is done that makes but, a difference? But, he was a funny guy. Yeah. But anyway, what I'd love to do is uh, uh, show a clip of Tarana Burke, who's the founder of the Me Too movement. Here's what she has to say. Sexual violence is deeply pervasive and it touches everybody across race, class and gender um, and ability. And so we have to kind of find ways to work together in order to, to move the needle. And, and I think back to Rachel's point Rachel about said, yeah. men too, is where sexual harassment and sexual assault is concerned, it's usually a small group of men actually committing the majority of the crimes. So in the case of Harvey Weinstein, it was him mm. in that company doing the majority of the harassment. Yeah. And I think this mm. is the problem. It's not the majority of men. It's a few men that are actually doing a lot of harm. Mm. And so therefore, we should make sure that the conversation is clear. You, when the Matt Damon tried to make the, all men so when into Matt Damon tried to, I think it was Matt Damon, wasn't it? He tried to make the nuanced point you're yeah. making about yeah. the categorization of the different crimes. Yeah. You know, shoplifting is an armed robbery. He wasn't just shouting out. He was like, how did yeah. yeah, he was held in the and it's like, I, I think that That's wrong. It, a man needs to be able to speak 
make this this point as as well as a woman. It can't be a course, female only conversation. No, that's the reason. Yeah. That's the reason why. Yeah. Can, can I just say what Catherine Deneuve, if you remember, she spoke out at the time, yeah. you know, against the Beijing Brigade, and she says. What began as freeing women are up to speak has today turned into the opposite. We intimidate people into speaking correctly, shout down those who don't fall into line, and those women who refuse to bend are regarded as complicit and traitors. And I'm afraid that's what's happened mm -hmm. we, in many ways to the meeting. So how has the dialogue won back, June? But I think it's, it's important that women like ourselves who think the way we do, that we stand up, and actually we're the ones that create a space for men to enter the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's evolving I do think it's don't forget this has just started so we're at the beginning of this I do think it's evolving you know Majid without doubt Robin Williams would have been a complex and challenging character to work with a bit like you and Carol Malone in many yeah. ways I mean the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the similarities no um the workplace has it changed forever the dynamic in the workplace yeah, now? yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so and I think that yeah. um I think that uh, in many cases for the better uh, because of course yeah. um oh. some of these <laughs> So in many cases, I said, in many cases, better, because some, in many cases for the better, because some of these excesses that occurred during the workplace were criminal, mm. and so if if we can stop at least most of those criminal sides of the transgressions. Carol, you shrug. You know, if, 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 if young yes, women no, were I, being I illegally it, preyed yes, upon. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how the rules that are now in place would, will make it almost impossible for any workplace banter. Men and women have to be able That's to interact true. in the workplace. You know, when you think about it, many people's relationships are formed but, in the but workplace. But, don't you think we do need there, to have... There's one. I, I would never there's have had one. sex in the workplace. And I've never had a date. All my wife is all the So, I think... Some of the rules now in place, like, you know. But, I but just Carol, think... don't you think we do need rules? We do. We need do rules. need we people do, to know what the boundaries are. We do. Are. But as Catherine Deneuve just said, it's you know, it's turned into a movement where people have to speak correctly, and 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 they have to be careful about every word they say, every gesture they make, every touch they make. You know, can a guy? Yeah. Can you? Could, would you in an office now touch a no. woman's arm? But maybe I mean, it's going to take that to get to. It, it, it might calm down. Yeah, actually. exactly. The dust might settle. The History might, normally says it just yeah. builds on itself, doesn't I it? Don't well, because think so. no, you know why? Because if you put these rules down that are so impossible to adhere to and are so uh, unhuman, mm. you know, because human beings, whether with a man or a woman, yeah. I, will, I will do this, right? Mm. You, know, you see me around my my guy friends, my arms around them all the time. You know? yeah. What they call what they call it horseplay. Yeah. So, point Would you is do it with a woman in the office well, now? Did you put so an arm around your shoulder? You're still going will... on those I... single men's weekends <laughs> <laughs> to Amsterdam all the time. You're still going on those. What is yeah. it all about? I think the dust will settle. I think Everybody, it will. Everybody, the yeah. statute of limitations on this topic has expired. Oh, okay. You're watching The Pledge on Sky News and up next. I'm asking, have we lost the true meaning of Easter? under the impression that Christmas came but once a year. So why, pray, are the nation's shopkeepers hawking us turkey for our Easter tide tables? Panettone, stolen, decorations, trees, the sort of fair, in fact, you might find in a traditional German Christmas market. I don't dare switch on the TV in case there's a gloopy John Lewis advert to try to get us to give each other Easter prezies, or an advert for eggs without saying Easter on them, or another repeat of the pledge. <laughs> this is still a Christian country. The egg is a symbol of Christ's resurrection. Holy Week is the most important Christian celebration of the year. Of course, we all love a chalky egg, but don't let Easter too become a marketing, shopping and eating opportunity, <laughs> just devoid <laughs> of ritual and meaning. Tsk. Now, and as the Easter bunny only comes once oh. a year, I have got some examples of Easter marketing for yeah. you. Here we have, um, that's got no mention of Easter on it. Okay. Who wants that one? Smarties. No, I've like got something smarties. special for you. No. Okay. I'm giving it to our smarty pants. And this is a, a pink unicorn. Oof. I mean, does that say Easter that. to you? As it's a unicorn, I thought we should give it to Carol because she still believes in Brexit. Oh. Oh. This, this is, is going a, to happen, Rachel. This is an egg <laughs> that says... <laughs> Uh, you want this for your kids. <laughs> it says Easter in tiny writing. I like my creamy eggs. But finally, for June, Yay. 
This is a proper Easter egg, which has got a book oh, explaining the Easter story and the oh. meaning of Easter. Oh. It says called the real Easter egg. It's literally the most worthy thing you've ever and seen. It's in fair a recycled book. We can All of it. share Nick. this, Nick. What a well, pity. <sighs> what a pity. You can yeah. have the unicorn. No, I'm good. Did you I'm want good. To? <laughs> <laughs> now, can we put our marketing uh, I, I, opportunities I, 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 away yeah. so we can talk about the meaning Rachel, of Easter? Rachel, yes. Rachel, Rachel. <sighs> Where? Bar humbug, you sound like Ebenezer Scrooge <laughs> in that introduction. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm, Easter is still about religion. It's still about Christ and the resurrection. But it's also an opportunity for companies on the side to peddle a bit of wear and make a bit of profit, especially if they've got <laughs> stock left over from Which Christmas. Just what do they do with it? They're recycling the trees turkeys. and turkeys. Those turkeys are going to rot Yum. unless they sell them. I mean, look, it's not actually, it's no exaggeration. They've introduced turkeys for Easter. Have a look yeah. at this. <laughs> this is um, apparently that's an, an Easter, Easter turkey. turkey. Doesn't What's look too much different. From a Christmas <laughs> turkey. To be fair, she did say that. <laughs> yes. Did. Did so, say but that. you see, because that will go to waste otherwise. They're trying to sell it, and so let them. You know, no one's right, stopping so we're you back also in celebrating. And we just got to buy up old stock. Yeah. I am a Christian, as you know, yeah. and I'm a practicing one. But this country's becoming more and more secular. So it, Easter doesn't mean what it used to for the majority. No, not necessarily. I think it's something, it doesn't mean what it once did for a lot of people. What is the, why are we doing well, it? I know what it I'm has on. no meaning. Well, it's the time for families to come together. It's the no, Anglo Saxon no. goddess Oster, the goddess of fertility. I'm on the loss of her memory. Mm. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm on. You know, we, you were talking about the commercialization of it. The, the, the trouble is that commercialization only happens with consent and people had to start losing faith in Christianity yes. before the manufacturers yeah, yeah. were allowed in. to yeah, yeah, yeah. rush in and the problem the problem isn't it's not isn't that Easter has been commercialized it's what what's important is that religion isn't putting out a strong enough message to draw that's a great point. people in and yes. that's part of, you know in in the late 16th century baroque churches were built to attract people to come to the church it was a commercialization yeah. of yeah. the religion if you like yeah. well, I've and, got a and, solution. and and people had to come and they paid I, to be I, in I, the... I have a solution to that oh, and, do, it's what's four, it? and it's a four letter word and it begins with f and i will tell you the solution oh, in just a moment oh, oh yes it's a... It but uh, for many reasons so who thought brexit was the big debate it's yeah. exit isn't yes. it yes. and this is what i would say exit and this is what Nestle UK want to get across. In our confectionery archive, we have examples and records of thousands of Easter products from down the decades. Most of them don't refer to Easter explicitly on the packaging. Mm. Chocolate eggs have been synonymous with Easter and the Easter story since the beginning of the last century, so the association is an automatic one. These products are clearly made and sold specifically for the Easter season. The wording on these products has changed mm. very little over time. Mm. Good point you make that people don't go yeah. to church. I respect the fact that you do. Do you know what I think has gone out of church? And that's fear. The F letter, what the F word is yes. fear. Yes. Because I think in some instances, the reason that I enjoy, and my uh, late father was not a practicing Catholic, was a Catholic, mm. uh, lady I'm with at the moment is Catholic, I love the sense of fear in a Roman Catholic service, in that you, yeah, that you have to do that, and that you, in a way that you might have been a sinner, and you have to be careful. And I think, and I think the way we went down a very dangerous and rather retrograde step when we had vicars playing guitars happy, and, happy, and yeah, that's the word. Thank you, happy, happy yeah. vicars yeah. playing guitars. Yeah, I like a bit of fear, fear that if you don't behave yourself, and God will have His no, judgment. But... You'll all go to hell, and that's it. And that's <laughs> my Easter message. You know We're what? all going to hell. Okay, you know. <laughs> I don't think the meaning of Easter at all. It's about redemption oh, that's and right. rebirth. Exactly. That's yes. No, that's love. But that is point, not fear. The point is. about being a Catholic, though, in the lead up to Easster, for, in my family, oh, I'm sure, and, I, yeah, oh, and, sorry, I'm, right, and okay. I'm sure in yours, it was six weeks of torture. It was Lent. You yes, had to do Lent, without. Yes, and you yes, had to go to church yes, and you had to do yes, the stations And the then cross. you've got your chocky egg. But yeah, but you know what? You only ever got one off your mum and dad and maybe one off your nan. And that was, yeah. that was the end of it. There was no big celebration other than kneeling yeah, in church. Oh, stations of the cross. We used, to dream, we used to dream of having Cadbury's. Yes. <laughs> Cadbury's do say they're very big on Easter and they fit it into all their products for, during this season. But what, what, what I will say is that what, I, what swung me against your debate is when I saw the Easter tree because actually yeah. I thought it was like a Christmas tree but they've actually designed a tree that very much looks like oh, Easter that's lovely. because of the eggs now you know okay. it, that it's difficult yeah. to it's difficult to criticize that because even though it's a tree we associate trees with Christmas mm -hmm, that does it's look not, like an yeah, Easter it's not tree. a recycled you know? Christmas but you know right. but this also yeah. puts a lot of pressure on families I think as well you know Christmas is really yeah. expensive for, for a lot of families you're just getting over and that eggs, so wham, and wham it's Easter yeah. again but it's not just the eggs it's all of this nonsense that goes with it as well so I think it's a massive pressure on families. 
People try to get the perfect Christmas, now they're trying to get the perfect Easter. Right. And it won't happen. Well, and then, of course, we had the millennials <laughs> jumping on board. We, did, we have the um, Easter avocado egg. Oh, yes. Have we seen that? I, think we've got a, I, I did think that was... What's this? this is, okay, I'm going to test this is for the panel. To, I know that chocolate. this is shown over the Easter weekend yeah. as well, but what yeah. is today? What, what is, is the official name of today? Oh, it's Maundy Thursday. Thursday. What's yeah. tomorrow? Easter, uh, good, Friday. good Friday. Good Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. we're yes. on board the Easter yeah. bus. Yeah. But I mean, well, you got any more? <laughs> well, but it's interesting. For, one poll said 43% of young people didn't believe in the resurrection. No. Which, which yeah. is very sad. And what so happened on Maundy Thursday? Oh, he was, yeah. he was starting to walk. It, yes, yes. And, then and what he, happened on Good Friday? He walked well, up the hill with the cross. Yeah. And what does the cross mean? You know, all of this well, stuff is being lost. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. all just about the crucifixion. No, but people know that story. Of course. Even I wonder whether young, we're of a different but generation. But the crucifixion is a sign of belief yeah. in Christianity. It's not being and lost because we're making chocolate. Exactly. It's being lost because of Carol's point. Yes. Yeah. Well, because of the failure of the church. Yeah, it's not because companies that whose responsibility it isn't not to all teach churches. Easter. No, the Catholic Church that, yeah. has grown because of the yes, number of Eastern Europeans. Yes. You go yeah, to parts that's of London. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's no, that's because thing. of immigration. I'm that's not because of the indigenous community. So what yeah. you're saying is yeah. right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. not because you of native origins. So we can link it to Brexit. No. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask yes. you, yes. because, you know, what I was saying, society is becoming more and more secular as, mm. or, or not Christian. As a Muslim, what does Easter mean to you? And how do you celebrate it? So if one of the core tenets, so Muslims believe in Jesus as a prophet. Know, one of the yes. core tenets of, of Islam that it differs with uh, over Christianity is that they believe that Jesus wasn't crucified, mm. that God basically uh, saved his prophet. Mm -hmm. um, and apart from, therefore, the, the Easter story is kind of it's not really in sync, yes. but the, resur the the return of the Messiah, you believe we that. go back to that, right? Okay. So, so the bit that's missing is the Easter bit, which is why perhaps I'm slightly indulgent with the chocolate, because it's like, for me, it is, you know, it's always been a secular holiday. We have to sense. exit from this conversation <laughs> because you know what it's like. It's the end of term. Everyone's a bit tetchy, wishing it was already the holidays and wondering why it's not sunny outside. Well, Commons Speaker John Burko found a way to let off steam this week, lambasting Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson for daring to call his Labour counterpart Emily Thornberry by her married name. Say no, says the noble and learned lady, the Baroness, whatever it is, I can't remember what it is. Nuji. Uh, what an extraordinary thing. We do not address people by the titles of their spouses. The Shadow Foreign Secretary has a name. And it's not Lady something. We know what her name is. And it is inappropriate and, frankly, sexist yeah. to speak in those terms. Yeah. And I'm not having it in this chamber. Yes. Love that guy. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Speaker Burko, yeah. for, that, for that confected rant, you oh, win our squeaker. Good of the week. No, spot it on. made me Nonsense. sick. No way. No, no way. Why? You you know, one at a time. Being accused of bullying June Suckle. I completely agree with Speaker oh, Burke. I sexist and not funny. OK, I'm totally we refer to his wife as Sally Burke. We refer to the Prime Minister as Mrs May, which is a title held by her husband. Mrs May has referred she to her. That's the name she uses. She was born Theresa Brazier. Mrs May has referred to her as Lady Nuji as well, and nobody exactly. said a word. But it's about <laughs> self-identification, right? So my missus has kept her family name. Yeah. And so for somebody to then call her by my name is the problem. If she had changed her name voluntarily, no, that's different. A he did in a it, sentence. He did it to curry favour with Labour because he thinks he's going to get ousted as Speaker. Of course, Simple yeah. as that. There you go, John Burko, and that that's it for this week and this season of The Pledge. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Happy Easter and thanks for watching.